اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم السلام علیکم and welcome to another edition of Jaiza first of all wanted to wish all of our viewers a very happy new year as well as uh, Eid Mubarak uh, for the Eid al-Adha coming up wanted to also make sure that we remember uh, the people uh, suffering in the earthquake zones uh, on this program so our hearts are with you, you know, we've covered several programs on that this particular program focuses in on a very important issue. The issue is women's rights. Let's go take a look at uh, President Musharraf's address to the Pakistani American women and uh, we'll come back after looking at some excerpts from his speech. That our president, and this is now coming from my heart, is honest, he's sincere, and he's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, your president. Ladies and ladies and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me first of all say that I commend all the efforts of Pakistani women, their achievements, their efforts to emancipate themselves and their struggle against violence against themselves. And let me commit here wholeheartedly that I stand totally on the side of women in, sub in your support, in women's support to struggle against violence and to struggle for gender equality. These are the two main issues. I would like to comment on certain aspersions being cast on me, started by Washington Post, I think, and then taken up by, by many other newspapers. Let me see, uh, say with total sincerity that I never said that and it has been misquoted. I happened to be where this was being quoted. It, these are not my words. And I would go to the extent of saying I am not so silly and stupid to make comments of this sort. I would like to take on violence against women first of all. As far as I am concerned, I consider personally this to be a most abhorrent act and so do any educated man would feel that this is uh, the, the most condemnable act because I personally feel that this is most unchivalrous, most unmanly to be violent against the weak and therefore I condemn it and I am on the side of women. Is that, was that against my saying weak? Or, uh, okay, I stand on the side of the strong and that is the women. But now, let me highlight, let me take this opportunity to highlight certain facts and figures and put facts in their correct perspective. First of all, violence and against women is not an is not a individual country malice. It is a global phenomena as has been brought out. And it is suffered even in all the developed countries of the world. Let me first of all, as far as Pakistan is concerned, say that Pakistan's record on women, women's rights, violence against women, gender equality is certainly much to be desired. And I would go to the extent of saying we should be ashamed of it and we must do something about it very strongly.
Welcome back. It is important and interesting to note that uh, in the first part of the speech, President Musharraf referred to a statement made to the Washington Post and uh, his uh, rebuttal of that. He then uh, talks to the Pakistani American women about the government's uh, agenda and the progress they've shown. He also pointedly uh, talks about his displeasure or actually even his anger about uh, uh, people bringing up this issue outside of Pakistan and in particular uh, parading the victims, uh, quote unquote, uh, in New York City. Let's take a listen. But however, having said that about our own environment, I would also like to point out that if you see around the world, even in the United States where we are standing today, I am told women are raped every 90 seconds, but that does not mean that these victims of violence, the women, are taken to China and their case propounded there. And also let me say that in Canada, 29% women since the age of 16 were assaulted but they don't go to Australia to highlight their cases. And I could go on in France also, similar incidents, they don't have to go around. And in our neighborhood, in India, the situation is similar to Pakistan, where in their own magazines, I've been quoting everywhere, I read their magazines very carefully. In India today, in Outlook, these two magazines, there are umpteen number of cases of violence against women with examples, with pictures, photographs, but they are not brought here, paraded in New York, in United States, to be addressed. So therefore, why I am highlighting all this is my indignation, my disappointment, and I wouldn't be wrong if I said my extreme anger at our cases of Pakistan being brought to New York, our country being singled out. <laughs> being made international poster cases, as if it is only Pakistan where this violence against women is happening and not anywhere else in the world. The situation is more annoying, may I say, when individuals, groups, or NGOs, or some part of the media who belong to Pakistan who do this, who are involved in doing this. My anger is extreme for those people who do that. After all, where has patriotism gone? What is patriotism? What is your love for the nation? I do not deny the fact that you must raise these issues. Let me not be misunderstood. We have to raise these issues. I appreciate the media coming up front, putting these issues on the front page in Pakistan. And I read that and I react to that. But I certainly do not appreciate, I certainly will not be supportive of anybody who brings it outside Pakistan and brings it here. I know that such people, such vested interests, they have vested interests, they have their political agendas, maybe they have their financial agendas also. So therefore, let me conclude by saying that if their intentions are sincere of working for the emancipation of women, working for women's rights, I am with them. All the NGOs who are working for women sincerely, I personally feel the end objective of achieving the rights of women, doing good for the women, their end objective and my end objective is the same. But I keep saying that if their intention is just to let me down or let our government down or let Pakistan down, and they just want to shout around, I want to convey a message. I can shout much louder than them. 
Welcome back. Now we are going to go to another part of General Musharraf's speech. Uh, this is where the president gets a little testy and also gets a little personal. Uh, let's take a listen. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I have highlighted these issues, the three major issues of bringing religion, religious teaching of women in harmony with socio-cultural practices, of bringing the, addressing the issue of witnesses, of addressing the issue of mindsets of people who are sitting in judgment or on women issues. These are the areas I feel where the NGOs and any organization needs to concentrate on, which will create effect on the masses of women of Pakistan. And if we addressed only Mukhtar Amai's case, very good, we've done very well for Mukhtar Amai, and that is all, period. So therefore, let's be very clear. Let's shift focus from individual cases to collective causes and remedies. And also, of course, in doing this, we must not wash our dirty linen abroad. I, I said last time, I had said last time that we can do a better job of laundry at home. <laughs> you want to have it abroad? Who is for bringing it outside Pakistan? You want to raise these issues outside Pakistan? Then, then let, okay. Then then whoever is saying yes, I will oppose you all the way. Let that be clear. I am a, let, be, let it be very clear, I am a fighter. I don't succumb to such, anyone who raises these issues here is opposing me and I will oppose you all with my whole force. Anyone raising this issue outside, you should wait and see what I do with any one of those people. So don't try to, don't try to cow me down or don't try to cow down Pakistan. We know what we are doing and we will correct it, but we don't need your assistance. Welcome back. Now we're going to go to the Q&A session where some uh, difficult questions were posed to the president and uh, this is how he, he responded to those questions. I want to take a question from this end where they want... Huh? Oh. Could you okay. um, yeah, I want to hear you. Gee, you have categorically denied the statements you made to the Washington Post the other day. If, th if that is indeed true, would you be ready to make a retraction and issue a retraction to the newspapers across this country as well as in your home country to make sure that they correct the situation that our esteemed head of state could not utter such unbecoming remarks? Yeah, Number yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two, I, just uh, uh, another quick question. It is indeed a sad day here today to hear a head of state so clearly confront and express his personal animosity towards a group of very committed human rights defenders in a manner that is unbecoming of a head of state. Okay. Today, I feel very sad as a human rights activist, activist because when you came to power, I still had some hope that unlike your predecessor, General Ziaul Haq, you had a progressive thought and opinion and you could take us forward. Confrontation between human rights groups and the state is not the solution. We have heard you say today that we have to work together. How and in what manner human rights groups choose to um, employ their manner of protest should not be dictated by the state. 
If that is so, then Michael Moore, Robert Fisk, George Galloway, all of these. Who I wish, I wish, I wish you quoted from Muslim scholars more than you were quoting the British scholars and all that. I wish you knew more about your own country and your own your own people than you know about the West. Now, now let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. First of all, when you say if you are speaking the truth, maybe lady, maybe you would be used to people who tell lies. I am not one of them, okay? We, I never tell lies. Whatever I speak is always the truth. I speak from my tongue and my mind and my heart. Maybe, maybe you are used to leaders who have been with you and who told, tell, who've been telling lies always. To be used to new leaders who don't speak lies as your leaders have been. Secondly, secondly may I also say that when you are talking of my tongue, this is the forum that I've said, whatever I've said, what more, what more is it? Let the, there is media sitting right here, right here, there, there is the media. So <laughs> I've said whatever I had to say. And lastly now, this issue of your, uh, that you are disappointed with me. I am disappointed with people like you who, who do these things here. I am disappointed, I am disappointed with people like you I am disappointed because you are not in national interest. You, are, you have got some personal angles and you are the follower of people who have personal angles. They have looted and plundered this country and you are with them. So therefore, I am not at all with people who are against the country. Welcome back again. Now we're going to go get the reaction of the people that were asking the questions, a segment of the audience that was not very happy with uh, the way the president answered some of the questions there. We're going to speak to some of the guests next and then uh, come back and wrap up the program. We're here with Ms. Sabra Qureshi. She asked a question to which uh, General Musharraf, President Musharraf got very personal. So we'll get her thoughts. First of all, the gist of her question, how she was understood. Sabra, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum ji. Uh, you know, rambunctious debate, and I think that it's, uh, it's uh, very interesting to see uh, the women's issues being discussed, but uh, your specific question and uh, the response to it, if you can comment. Well, I asked two questions. My first one was, of course, uh, asking him if he was willing to retract the, his um, so-called misquoted statements to the Washington Post which he again kind of skimmed over and said, well, I've made a response today and this is my audience and I've responded to them, which I thought was, um, was inappropriate because from the Canadian Prime Minister to just about every news channel and newspaper across the world has picked up on that and I think it would have behoved him to issue a correction or a retraction if he really did not say that. Secondly, my question was, he had been on the one hand talking about the need to work together in the struggle for human rights and on the other he kind of was very personal in his views about how people who do not go along with his view of um, the struggle how he would respond to them he said if they can shout i can shout louder i will personally go after them so he was personalizing all of this and my co question was it's really a sad day indeed for us to see a head of state a leader whom perhaps some might uh, uh, agree or disagree we did expect a little more than the previous military dictator who was very very rigid and orthodox and extremist in his religious views here was a progressive man so the question that you were asking was based on his comments in a speech that said that you know Mukhtar and Mai or other people like that uh, Dr. Shazia shouldn't come out to the uh, United States or be singled out or single Pakistan out in that manner and then be paraded around the streets and so on. And your response was? My response was, number one, they were not going to be paraded around the streets. They were being called to a symposium in Houston. Number two, when people don't get justice in their homes, what are they supposed to do? Sit there and get defeated or step out of their homes to seek justice? And that is what the women of Pakistan are doing because they are not getting justice in their own country. 
You, uh, you gave us some examples of reporters, columnists, journalists. Can you repeat that? Yes, I was talking of people like Robert Fisk, George Galloway, Michael Moore, George Monbiot, and also other people like, for us, great names like Noam Chomsky, Arundhati Roy, Edward Said, Iqbal Ahmad, who, if, if, if we really go by General Musharraf's yardstick, in the course of protecting our country's image of how to protest, then by that token, all these people should be denounced as traitors. They are the ones who are also raising issues to say that India is not happening. Of course, uh, the issues. Look at what Arundhati Roy is writing. Who raised the issue of the Gujarat massacre? It's and, and to say that because other countries are not doing, we should keep it hidden inside. I mean, the, his his obsession with the image issue is now reaching an unrealistic. Uh, an unrealistic stage. And the other thing is very disappointing is how he loses his stature and dignity by coming down to a very personal vindictive level. Uh, Sabra, do you think that uh, General Musharraf, there are obviously positive things that uh, his government has done, uh, the ministry has done uh, for the cause of women, uh, much more positive uh, than what we have seen in the last, I don't know, decade, two decades and so on. Can you speak to that? Well, I'd like to respond uh, to that in a manner that the, there is always two sides to a picture. So you, it's like two steps back, one step forward, uh, two steps forward, one step back, or whichever way you want to take this. He says, yes, he's done this, but has it really empowered? You've got 30,000 women in the legislatures. Look at the power they have. None. Now, if you really want those 30, if you're genuine, and I, I commend that step if you're genuine that empower those women to play their due role similarly he mentioned we've set up a national commission on the status of women i was a member i was the first one of the first members of the on the permanent national commission on the status of women in pakistan what has he done to that commission today it stands without any members and no chairperson how how did he make a, such a strong statement saying it's functioning it's not uh, last question for you. Uh, he's made specific references to the opposition, vested interests. He talked about Benazir Bhutto and the PPP and some vested interests there. Do you belong to an opposition party? Do you belong to the PPP by any chance? No, not at all. I have never been part of any political party. I have been struggling as an individual human rights and women's rights activist for the last 25 years, which I'm very proud to be. I've never been associated with any political party at all. Totally non So no vested interest? No vested interests whatsoever. I have no uh, affiliation with any either civilian or military government whatsoever. Here uh, with Dr. Fawzia Afzal Khan right outside the women's conference and uh, Dr. Fawzia didn't get to ask a question that, he, that she wanted to ask the president. Uh, what was the question? Uh, well, Umar, I was, I think, along with a lot of people, a bit surprised to hear the president of a country stand up and essentially say in a very confrontational manner that if you do not agree with what I am saying right here, right now regarding women and if you do not uh, agree with me about not airing what he called our dirty laundry in public, specifically abroad here in the United States, then you are not patriotic. And my question to him was going to be, um, under what definition of patriotism uh, do we silence citizens of our country, the NGOs that he was talking against, for example, in Pakistan, who are fighting in their own way for women's rights, or um, your people abroad, like myself, for example, who live in America, who teach here, who work here, who uh, do activist work here to enlighten people about not just Pakistani women and their rights and their problems, but women everywhere being, you know, as I am, a feminist. Uh, how do you say that to somebody and then s claim that you are for reconciliation, that you want a conciliatory tone and you do not want confrontation because that was an extremely confrontational argument. Furthermore, it made very little sense to me. So if our president of Pakistan claims to be, uh, you know, spearheading enlightened moderation, then his actions and his words today, I'm afraid, belied that. <clears throat> and I was very disappointed because there are many things about President Musharraf's policies about th that one admires. You know, even though I am against the idea per se of military dictatorship, he has done things that have improved a lot of the average Pakistani in many, many ways. So I was here, frankly, uh, you know, with an open mind, but I'm going away extremely disappointed by the kinds of comments that were very confrontational. 
let's turn the subject. Uh, you know, large part of his speech was related to all the good things that this government has done, very positive movements, and he was particularly concerned about protests outside of Pakistan and the bad name that that brings to Pakistan. What are your comments there? Okay, that's an excellent question, um, Omar. And, uh, you know, I have actually a very clear response to that. This is not about image making in the sense of, you know, always portraying uh, the good side of a country um, or a people uh, to win over the hearts and minds of other people. No, I think honesty, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, those are the hallmarks of any great society. And we are, in fact, those of us who are living here post 9-11 have seen many of those wonderful uh, freedoms in the United States being eroded and we are speaking out against the erosion of such civil liberties and you know so the strength of America has always been that people can stand up and go out and they can protest that doesn't mean that suddenly people all around the world are going to think oh America is a terrible place America like every other country like Pakistan has good and it has bad there are good things happening there are not such great things happening the whole point of activism and citizen involvement is that you should be able to have free speech a civil discourse and say yes this is good, we agree, these strides have been made, this is what needs to be done, can we have a real debate? We cannot have a head of state standing up and saying, no, we are not going to discuss this, this is wrong, I won't allow it. Welcome back. This has been a challenging edition for, uh, for Jaiza. On one hand, we had to show you the government's uh, initiatives and their perspective on things. On the other hand, and very importantly, we also wanted to share with you uh, the thoughts that the human rights activists and uh, attendees at the meeting had. Uh, it's a very, very tough balancing act, but one thing is very clear, more needs to be done about this issue. Women's rights, it's a very, very important issue for Pakistan, for the image of Pakistan. And I'm sure the Pakistani Americans and Pakistanis across the globe watching this program will agree that uh, we all need to make sure that progress is made on this front. This has been another episode of Jaisa. We would love to get your comments. The address is on the screen. Thank you for watching another episode.